Okay, let's talk about derivative notation we're going to be using. Now remember, a derivative is nothing but the gradient of the tangent. You can also see it as the rate of change. They're actually the same. Okay, so just remember that. So derivative is just a gradient of the tangent. It's also just a rate of change. Let's start looking at the kind of language of calculus that we need. So if we have an original function called y, then the derivative, the way we write derivative, we could write y primed. It's a bit of a lazy way because we're assuming uh, y is only in one variable. So for most cases, that's that's okay. If you want to get strictly uh, a little bit more accurate, let's say, um, if we start off with y, we should actually be saying dy dx. This is actually a much better way to do it. Now the d's don't cancel out. What this really means is a change in y over a change in x because it's a rate of change. So this is actually the better way to say it because this, what this says is how y changes with x. This is really better because it turns out in math you could have equations that have two variables. What if y is in terms of x and z? Then you know, ah, take the y equation and find the x derivative of it. In other words, find out how it changes with x and maybe you ignore the z. Here it's really ambiguous. You don't know what to do. Another notation, what if we use f of x? Then we'll say f primed of x. So this we just use this little symbol like this little prime. So you might see it like y primed. I think you're going to see this much more common. dy dx is much more common or f primed of x, something like that. Those are much, much more likely to be seen, okay? But I mean, y primed is also okay. This is the better notation, it turns out. Although it looks complicated, it's actually the better one. It tells you more. It's more strict. All right, so remember, again, derivative is a rate of change, how one variable changes with the other. Let's look at some things that we could do with that. Like if we wanted, like in physics, we have something called how velocity changes with time. So we could write it like this. We could say dv dt. See, that would be, all right, take your velocity equation and see how does velocity change with time. That would be how velocity changes with time. We'd write it dv dt. Maybe we have like in uh, economics, maybe. Maybe how cost, so maybe dc. Maybe c is cost. Maybe number of products sold, maybe that's uh, x. Because maybe this guy here, a number of products could be x. This here could be called C. Do you see, haha, uh, this notation, it's really helpful because this tells you, ah, take your V equation and see how it changes with a T. Or take your C equation and see how it changes with X. So you can do anything you like, right? There's lots of different ways. I'm just trying to show you some different examples. It doesn't just have to be dy dx. It all depends on what your equation is. If you have like H of X, then it's dh dx. So it's just how the thing changes with another thing. We have something called average rate of change. That's an interesting one. So that right there would be like the total, like the total change in y over the total, total change in x. Maybe I'll put the line like this. So that's how we do the average rate of change. You just find out the overall total change in the y value, divide that by the total change in x. That's called the average rate of change. Whereas if you want instantaneous, you just do the derivative at a point. That's what I've been showing you in another video, right? So we're going to be learning lots about how to do this. This is going to be what we're going to focus a lot on. So let's go ahead and do an example for this. So we can say, all right, we have a person, A, and they work for 13 hours and they earn $94.25. Another person, B, works for 19 hours and earns $195.70. Who has the better rate of pay? Now, most people know you would divide this by this. I just want to show you how we can use calculus notation. So again, it, hopefully this isn't too, too brain busting. We're just going to use calculus notation. Maybe I call this P for pay. Maybe I call this here H for hours. Well, then using this calculus sort of notation like this, this rate of change, I could say dp dh, let's just say. Well, that's going to be the change in pay. In this case, it's really simple. It's just 94.25. Divide that by the number of hours, which is 13, and let's just figure that out. The reason I'm doing this, just to show you, we can do this with things you understand. We can use calculus notation as well. It could be suitable here. So this is 7.25. So what does that mean? That means that this person, person A, earns $7.25 per hour. This is their rate of pay. Well, didn't we say calculus is all about a rate of change? So a rate of pay is suitable. Right? This is sort of reasonable to use calculus notation here. You maybe never thought to do it, but you could. So dp dh for person B, let's see what theirs is. Well, theirs is 
over 19. Let's do that on my calculator and see what I get. So 195.70, divide that by 19, and I get 10.3. So $10.3 dollars per hour. And which rate of pay is the better? Well, clearly person B's is they get more money. So just so you know, the, the reason I wanted to give you this is to give an easy looking example, but that still uses calculus notation, just to try to get you to start speaking the language of calculus as it were. So in calculus, we also talk about limits. So that's something I want to introduce to you now. Now limits themselves, they can seem really simple, but you can go really deep and do crazy stuff. So let's just look at this. So if I write this notation, like lim x with an arrow two, what that really means is what they're, this is just a compact mathematical way to say the limit as x approaches two. That's what this means. Okay, so the limit as x approaches two of x plus three. Well, in this case, hopefully you'll see it's really easy. I just say two plus three, so that just gives me five. I'm done. That was pretty easy. Sometimes limits get a little bit funky. Look at this one. So limit as x approaches infinity. Well, what number is infinity? This can be really brain busting for people. Okay, so the point is not to go too, too crazy with this, but let's just attempt to do this. So what do we do here? We could say, all right, well, one over infinity. Now it's difficult to do. You can't do that on your calculator, but you can take one over a big number. So what if I take one over 10, or one over 100, or one over 1,000, one over a billion? You'll notice you get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller numbers. Well, as this gets the biggest it can be, what's the smallest number you can have? Turns out it's zero. You can try it on your calculator, right? You can do like one divided, watch, just what if I say one divided by 10? Do you notice I get, well, let's do it like this. I get 0.1, right? But what if I say one divided by, I don't know, a whole bunch. Do you notice? Oh, thanks. <laughs> there we go. Do you notice I get 2 times 10 to the minus 18, which is very, very, very small? Well, as I get bigger, bigger number on the bottom, this gets even smaller. Well, what's the biggest number here? That's infinity. That'll give me the smallest number ever here. The smallest number that exists is 0. So it's a bit weird, I know, but this is why we say the limit as x approaches infinity is this. Well, we can do it for regular math type stuff too. So let's just look at this one. What if we do this one? The limit as h approaches 0 of 2h over h squared. Well, we could first of all make it simpler by canceling out some h business. So we have 2 over h. And we still want to do the limit, so as h approaches 0. Now what happens when I approach 0? Well, I have 2 divided by 0. Now, of course, your calculator just gives you error. We don't want the answer error. See, we're saying as it approaches zero. So think about this. If I do two divided by a small number and then a smaller number and a smaller number, just try that on your calculator even if you're not sure. Watch. Two divided by, I don't know, 10, let's just say. So I get 0.2. What if I do two divided by an even smaller number than 10? So what if I do two divided by, I don't know, one? Let's just look at what happened. Well, then you get two. Do you notice the number then gets bigger? What if I do 2 divided by an even smaller number than this? What if I say like 0. 0.0000, you know, just a very, very small number here. I'm trying to make this approach 0. So as I do this, do you notice I get 2 times 10 to the 9, which is a very large number? So imagine, and as this gets smaller and smaller, this gets larger and larger. Well, the smallest number ever is 0. What's the largest number ever? It's infinity. So it turns out, Although this is really weird seeming, just so you can understand, we can talk about limits in these weird ways here. Now, um, it turns out there's a really bad math joke. Are you ready for it? Uh, we could say this. Uh, how does it go? So an infinite number of mathematicians enter a bar. And the first one orders a drink. So, so the first one says, can I have a beer? The second one says, can I have half a beer? The third one says, can I have a quarter of a beer? And the fourth one, do you understand? And then it says, can I have an eighth of a beer? Finally, the bartender just looks at the infinite number of mathematicians, goes out, gets two beers, and says, come on, guys, know your limits. Because the limit as it approaches infinity. Uh, it's just, a, this is actually a infinite geometric uh, sequence, or series, I guess you could say. Bad joke maybe about limits, but there we go. So this ends uh, what we're going to do for limits.